Bitcoin, as we all know, uses energy to secure the protocol and validate transactions, but a lot of people don't like that energy consumption. Could we do things to make it much more constructive and positive for the world? When you think of the Bitcoin mining industry, it never has really had this connotation of being advanced technology. And yet when you bring people like yourself and the team at Oridine into the business and you start applying Silicon Valley mindset, not just developing technology, but commercializing technology, you really see what's possible. And I think that the US industry for Bitcoin mining, and especially as Bitcoin mining starts morphing into everything from energy optimization to being embedded in all sorts of heat reuse applications, applications and other things. We'll see some really exciting innovation coming. All of those things are very tough technical problems that don't get solved overnight. Nobody else has done it before. So this is like breaking new ground. I think that if I look at where Bitcoin is now in terms of regulatory certainty, I think it's critical for Silicon Valley to have a leading player here. Different countries around the world face this issue of do they want to rely on Chinese technology or would they like an alternative? And I think that is a great future for Ordon. Rajiv, thank you for coming. I appreciate you being here at the show and making time to speak with me uh, with this fireside chat. Before we kind of get into the, the nuts and bolts of Oridine and Mars' relationship, tell us about your background. Yeah, well, first of all, it's a pleasure to be doing this with you, Fred. My background is I'm uh, essentially a technology entrepreneur, have been in Silicon Valley for 30 plus years. And I've been fortunate uh, after my technical degrees and MBA to be involved in uh, all of the major technology super cycles that have happened in our industry. So the first one was the beginning of the internet in the late 90s. Uh, and I was involved in a network processor silicon company, which was acquired by Intel. I was GM of that business for several years. The second big wave that happened was mobile, uh, e-commerce and security. And there I spent 10 years at a company called Cabium, where I was the chief operating officer. We took that company public. Uh, so excellent run over there. The third big wave was cloud. And I was involved uh, in founding a company called Innovium, which built very high performance switches and still power the world's biggest cloud customers. Uh, and that company was acquired by Marvell in 2021 before uh, co-founding Oradine in uh, 2022. And you go back to 2022 when we think about Oridine. I know the discussions we had on our board uh, with Saeed and, and Ashu talking about how we really were looking for the alternative to the Chinese um, oligopoly, if you would, uh, that existed, especially in 2021 where they dominated the market. And I thought it was just almost serendipity how uh, the Oridine co-founding team and Mara found each other. Tell, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, from um, my perspective, I had just sold the company in 2021. I was looking at what the next big wave uh, was. In 2022, everybody was talking about Web3. And we thought that this concept of decentralization and this concept of democratization of technology as well as uh, currency uh, was a very important trend. We looked at kind of like where our talents were. I, I got approached by Barun, who is uh, a key founder of uh, Oradine. And uh, at that point, uh, the discussions were going on with Mara. Uh, and so the thought process was, yeah, we thought it was very important to have a, a US Silicon Valley technology company in this space. And it was almost ignored by a lot of the other industry uh, leaders. And uh, so this notion of a couple of things, which is one is, can we build a U.S. vendor? Because, you know, uh, while Bitcoin is decentralized, it would be also important to decentralize the supply of Bitcoin and certainly for U.S. to be a leader in this. So that was one big uh, motivation. The second big motivation was energy consumption. And Bitcoin, as we all know, uses energy to secure the protocol and validate transactions. But a lot of people don't like that energy consumption. And could we do things to make it much more constructive and positive for the world? And how could we do that through the tools and technology? So those are the two things that drove us um, to get Oradine off the ground. And I thought one of the key things that was exciting about the relationship between Mara and Oradine was the ability to co-create. We had a set of needs that 
clearly the vendors in China weren't providing. They were busy building boxes that were, you think of these old desktop servers back in the day, right? You just a box, you put lots of boxes together, that's your server farm. Um, and the need to build something that was industrial scale, something that was either rack mountable or had different form factors. And I thought the ability to co-create a product was very unique in an industry. Talk to us a little bit about some of the key innovations that Oradyne has done um, in the chip and then in the miners themselves. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, our backgrounds uh, as a team came from uh, networking security semiconductors. And so Bitcoin was new for us. Um, so I think that relationship with Mara was absolutely critical in getting us going um, and really understanding what were the important requirements of the Bitcoin industry. So, you know, as we started to work on this, we realized that uh, there were th certain things like, you know, en energy going up and down in a dynamic fashion very fast. That was very critical to the industry uh, to balance the energy consumption uh, from the energy sources and balance the grid and all of, all of those things. So that was one of the key things that we put in. Beyond that, making these systems more robust so they could operate in extreme temperature conditions, whether it's minus 20 C all the way up to 55, 60 C temperatures. So we built that into the product design. And then as we were going forward, uh, immersion, especially single phase and two phase immersion technologies, we realized were important. Um, to Mara and we think are leading edge technologies that are not easy. They, they require a lot of work to make happen. Mm -hmm. And without a collaborative relationship, uh, I don't think it was possible. So those were, those were some of the early things uh, that we were working very closely uh, with the Mara team, Ashu and, and everybody else. And I thought what was exciting was this ability to co-develop, right? because it, it, it's the best of both worlds. You have a customer who can give you very specific requirements. And at the same time, as the customer, we have a vendor who can give us very specific um, features and functionality to meet our needs. And as we look to some of the other technologies that you've been able to build into the chip, you know, talk to us a little bit about the tuning, because this, this is something I think that's very unique about what Oradyne does. Yeah, I mean, this uh, ability to go um at very granular, at very fine granular levels um, and be able to do it very fast up and down is technology that we effectively invented working closely with, with Mara and of course with some of our uh, semiconductor supply uh, partners. And then further actually making all these uh, equipment work together in two-phase immersion, very, very technically challenging. And again, uh, this was like, as you pointed out, it was more of a core development because which fluid do we optimize for? What tanks do we, uh, you know, check these systems out? Uh, you know, power supplies don't work because of the, uh, the nature of the fluid uh, that exists. Um, you know, all of those things are very tough technical problems that don't get solved overnight. Nobody else has done it before. Mm -hmm. So this is like breaking new ground. Uh, I'm very familiar with actually some of the large cloud companies that have done two-phase immersion projects, um, run it for several quarters and given up, right? And so for us to work together, uh, we, we may have given up were it not for the relationship that we have with the Mara technical team. It, we've talked a lot about Bitcoin mining. Oradyne has spun out some amazing technologies outside of Bitcoin mining. Share a little bit about that with us. Yeah, in uh, late 2022, ChatGPT exploded on the scene and it became very clear in beginning of 2023 that AI was, was here and is going to be you know, bigger every year for the next uh, decade or more. And it's gonna change our lives very significantly. And so we looked around uh, the team that we had in the company and we, we saw that uh, you know, we have teams that have really built the foundations of security enterprise security in the world through places like Palo Alto Networks um, and, and a variety of other companies. We've done networking through companies like my previous companies, Innovium, Marvell, Juniper, Cisco. And we felt like we could make a big impact in security and networking. So those were two areas we looked at. Within those two areas, uh, on the security side, uh, we started to look at what AI would do to security. And AI um, has, aspects to it. So first is, 
the AI is available to attackers. So they become much more sophisticated in attacking um, enterprises, much more than they were previously, right? And so you have to build new security technology to be able to defend against that. And these attackers are both outside the company and in some cases, even inside the company, okay? So that's one big area. The second big area was that the foundation of security technology was, was created a decade or more ago using things like pattern matching and you know, whitelist, blacklist, and, and so forth. Now in, in our toolbox, we have AI. And can we use AI as a foundation to make security much stronger? And so those two ideas led us to actually create inside of Ardine a company that we called AuraScape and spun it out, uh, got incredible traction, separately VC funded, actually recently at the RSA show became the top 10 most innovative security company uh, that the RSA uh, team picked out of hundreds of uh, startups. So super excited about that. So that's one. The second thing that we, we looked at is networking. And we all know, um, you know, NVIDIA has done an incredible job in putting an entire stack of AI all the way from GPU to the networking associated with that, to the CUDA layer on top of it, uh, and then you know thousands and maybe tens of thousands of large language models that run on that CUDA interface. We think, of course, that's super critical, and uh, NVIDIA is an amazing company. But we think that the world in, in the future will be built on open standards, similar to how it's happened in the compute space. And we felt like in the networking area, there is an opportunity to build an open standards-based networking provider that allows for you know, a number of AI chips and models to work. And we created yet another company uh, inside of uh, Auradyne, which we call Auralynx AI. Super excited about that. I think it's still early in its uh, um, development stage. And uh, again, uh, part of it. Now, we, we did all of this stuff without missing a beat. Uh, on the Bitcoin side, mm -hmm. where we have a dedicated set of uh, people focused on making sure we keep driving that roadmap. I think one of the amazing things is when you think of uh, the Bitcoin mining industry, it never has really had this connotation of being advanced technology. And yet when you bring people like yourself and the team at Oradine into the business and you start applying Silicon Valley mindset, to really not just developing technology, but commercializing technology, you really see what's possible. And I think that the US industry for Bitcoin mining, and especially as Bitcoin mining starts morphing into everything from energy optimization to um, just being embedded in all sorts of heat reuse applications and other things, we'll see some really exciting innovation coming uh, down at the chip level, even potentially miniaturization of Bitcoin mining. Um, we're also seeing people talking currently about co-populating boards with Bitcoin mining capability and GPU capability so that at a board level in a server, you can optimize energy utilization. And I think there's some really exciting future paths there. One of the great things that you and your team have also done is capital raising. I mean, it, undeniably a huge success story. I mean, we were very fortunate in that we were able to provide seed funding and we've been a continued funder in subsequent rounds. Um, but you have Mayfield, uh, amongst others. Who else are some of the investors that um, you'd like to share with the public just share to give a kind of an idea of the, the caliber of people you have? Yeah, I mean, we have been, uh, well, first, first of all, very fortunate and blessed to have, uh, you know, the relationship with Mara as well as the initial investors, which included Mayfield, which included Celesta, uh, that really got us going initially. And then beyond that, uh, I think it's a testament to our execution and it's a testament to our team that has uh, done an outstanding job that we were able to attract companies like Maverick Silicon, uh, like Stepstone, like Premji Invest, Qualcomm, Samsung, um, and many others uh, that that uh, are top Silicon Valley uh, venture capitalists into the into the mix here, and extremely supportive. And I think people are driven by our uh, vision and mission, which is to uh, put America on the map 
in Bitcoin technology, which is very important for a variety of reasons, including geopolitics and national security reasons. And it is also um, really, um, you know, I think that if I look at where Bitcoin is now relative to three years ago, in terms of regulatory certainty, in terms of the administration's posture, uh, I think it's a very critical thing for uh, Silicon Valley to have a, a leading player here. Absolutely. And I think it's also interesting as we see other countries around the world adopting Bitcoin mining as a way to consume energy. Pakistan has recently announced, for example, that they have two gigawatts of power that they would like to put into Bitcoin mining. Uh, different countries around the world also face this issue of do they want to rely on Chinese technology or would they like an alternative? And I think that is a great future for Ordine going forward in that area. If you had a magic wand and could envision the next Oridine product, what would you, how would you picture that? What would be the thing you would ask for if you could build the perfect product for Bitcoin mining? Um, I think what, well, so first of all, I think what we have already done is uh, we started out with system level products. More recently, what we did is, uh, and then as I mentioned earlier, we worked with uh, Mara on two phase immersion and a variety of immersion hydro cool products. So today, for example, uh, if you look at one of the latest NVIDIA racks, um, it fits about 140 kilowatts in a rack. Uh, with our uh, hydro cooling technology, we are north of 200 kilowatts in a rack, and we can go much higher uh, density th uh, than that. So um, we also, by the way, very recently uh, announced that we are offering chips, silicon, and we believe that that will fuel further innovation. You know, we as a small company can't do all of the form factors uh, that the world needs. Like, as you mentioned, uh, in heater applications, um, you know, maybe using some of these chips in server applications mm -hmm. uh, with AI servers and, and the like. So we are opening up that um, capability to, to a number of our uh, customers, as well as new customers that may uh, be interested. And in terms of magic wand, I think that um, clearly... Um, Innovative form factors, you know, making sure that we make things way more efficient than they are even right now. Um, and then also, you know, some places have so much energy where energy is cheap or wasted, where cost matters as well. So I think both of those are very important vectors for us. I think for us, one of the most exciting things is now even Mara's starting to build their own miners. So we're one of your first chip customers and starting to build miners specifically tailored to the environments we want to operate in. And I think that gives us more flexibility and gives you the freedom to focus on the core competency uh, around the chips. Um, I just want to thank you so much for being here and for being a partner tomorrow. And I look forward to an exciting future for Oridine and its derivative companies as you continue to build the Oridine empire of uh, children that go out and populate the AI world and look forward to a stronger American Bitcoin mining industry. Yeah. Well, uh, again, thank you so much, uh, Fred, and to the Mara team for your support through these years. I think we are at the beginning of a long partnership that should span many, many more years. And uh, we'd love to enable you to continue Mara's expansion. I know you've already got an uh, incredible position in Bitcoin as well as a um, you know, global footprint, increasingly strong global footprint that we think we would love to um, help you enable and become successful in that. Great. Thank you. Look Thank forward you. to it.